HIV. It begins like a passing flu, fever, sore throat, <coughs> night sweats, nothing that seems unusual. But deep inside, a virus has found its way into your blood. HIV doesn't kill quickly. It waits, hiding in the very cells that keep you alive, dismantling your defenses one by one. For years, you may feel fine. Life goes on as usual. But beneath the surface, your immune system is collapsing. And then, the moment comes when the walls fall. Pneumonia grips your lungs until every breath feels like drowning. <coughs> Parasites swarm the brain, leaving you seizing, confused, and afraid. Cancers bloom across your skin and organs. Your body wastes away, thin and frail, sweating through the nights, too weak to fight even the smallest infection. Dying from AIDS feels like being surrounded by enemies you can't see, each one taking a piece of you. The virus itself doesn't kill you. It simply opens the door and lets everything else in. What began as a fever ends as a siege, your body broken down brick by brick until there's nothing left to defend. Syphilis. It pretends to heal, but it never truly leaves. A sore, small, and painless fades on its own. You forget it. Syphilis doesn't. Weeks later, a rash blooms across your skin. Fevers. <coughs> swollen glands, even hair loss. Then silence again. Until years later, when it returns with vengeance. The brain begins to fail. <coughs> Memory slips. Balance falters. Seizures take hold. <coughs> Personality unravels until you no longer recognize yourself, or it strikes the heart, swelling your aorta until it bursts, flooding your chest with blood. Sometimes it creates gummas, soft, rotting growths that eat away at flesh and bone. Syphilis doesn't just kill, it humiliates. It can leave you mad, crippled, or torn apart from within. What started as a sore you barely noticed becomes a relentless force, patiently waiting years to claim its due. Gonorrhea. A sting, Oof. a laugh, a mistake you think will fade. Burning when you urinate. Ow. Oof. Oof. A discharge you try to ignore. Embarrassing but harmless, or so you think. Untreated, gonorrhea spreads. The bacteria seep into your blood traveling to your joints until they swell with pus and pain. Uh, they attack the heart, corroding its lining until every beat weakens. They reach the brain, inflaming it, leaving you delirious and racked with headaches. And then comes sepsis. The infection floods your body, the immune system lashes out in chaos, and your organs begin to shut down. Fever rises, breathing quickens. Confusion gives way to delirium. One by one, the systems that keep you alive fail. What began as a sting, you could laugh off ends in collapse. Gonorrhea is the joke that stops being funny when it takes your life. Chlamydia, nothing. No pain, no clue. Just a secret growing inside you. Chlamydia enters quietly, leaving no trace, no warning. In women, the bacteria creep into the uterus and fallopian tubes, scarring them with invisible webs. In men, it inflames the testicles with pain and swelling. Still, most feel nothing, until the scars reveal themselves in the worst way. A fertilized egg becomes trapped in a fallopian tube, unable to reach the womb, Pain sharpens in the abdomen, sudden and unbearable. Then the tube bursts and blood pours inside the body. Dizziness, fainting, shock. Within minutes, it can be fatal. Chlamydia rarely kills directly. Instead, it sets a trap. What began as silence ends with a hidden rupture. Death from scars you never even knew were there. Herpes simplex virus. HSV. A whisper turns into fire beneath the skin. A blister rises, bursts, heals, and disappears. You think it's over, 
But herpes never leaves. It hides in the nerves, waiting. For most, it's a cycle of pain and shame. But sometimes the virus takes another path. It climbs into the brain, and suddenly the headache is crushing, the fever relentless. Confusion takes over. Words slip away. Seizures strike. This is herpes encephalitis. The brain swelling against your skull until thought itself unravels. In the weakest, the virus spreads everywhere. Blisters cover the body, fever scorches nonstop, and organs collapse one by one. Breathing slows, consciousness fades. What began as a blister becomes the spark that ignites the whole body. Herpes doesn't just scar the skin. It can end you by burning through the mind itself. Human papillomavirus, HPV. Sometimes it hides for years, then blooms as cancer. HPV spreads easily through skin-to-skin -skin contact, often without a sign. Sometimes it causes warts. But the danger lies in the strains that stay silent. They wait, rewriting your DNA in shadows. Then a tumor appears. In the cervix, the throat, the rectum. At first, pain and bleeding. <coughs> then it spreads, invading deeper, suffocating, bleeding you from within. Swallowing feels like shards of glass. <coughs> Pelvic pain grows unbearable. Weight falls away. Fatigue consumes every movement. Chemotherapy and radiation burn the body from the inside out. But the tumors keep growing. HPV doesn't kill quickly. It kills slowly, mutation by mutation, until the body is too tired to fight. What began with nothing ends in years of pain until cancer finally wins. Hepatitis B and C. Deep inside, the liver works. Until it can't anymore. Hepatitis B and C wear it down day by day, year by year. At first you feel nothing. Maybe fatigue, maybe nausea. <sighs> but inside the liver scars and hardens. Cirrhosis begins. The skin and eyes turn yellow. The belly swells with fluid, heavy and tight. The mind clouds as toxins flood the brain. For some, cancer blooms in the ruined tissue, tumors spreading relentlessly. For others, the liver simply quits. Blood won't clot. Internal bleeding pours. The organs fail in a chain reaction. Hepatitis doesn't kill fast. It kills quietly, like water wearing down stone. Until one day the liver can no longer keep you alive. Trichomoniasis. It doesn't kill. It invites death in. Caused by a tiny parasite, it spreads silently during unprotected sex. Most never know they're carrying it. On its own, it rarely kills, but it leaves the body vulnerable, tearing small cracks in its defenses. Through those cracks, HIV slips in, and suddenly, <coughs> everything changes. Fatigue sets in. Night sweats soak the sheets. Infections multiply. The immune system collapses. <coughs> Breathing becomes harder. Simple illnesses become unstoppable. Trichomoniasis is the thief who leaves the door unlocked, letting the wolves in. What began as irritation becomes a trigger that sets death in motion. Chancroid, a sore that bleeds for company, and death accepts the invitation. Soft, raw ulcers spread across the genitals, refusing to heal. The groin swells with lumps that burst into pus. Every step, every touch is agony. But chancroid doesn't stop at the surface. The bacteria invade the blood, fever rises, <coughs> the heart races, delirium sets in, and sepsis floods through every vein. <coughs> the open sores also invite another killer, HIV. Together they work like partners, one opening the door, the other stepping through. What began as a single sore becomes fever, confusion, collapse. Chancroid is the infection that eats at you until the blood itself turns against you. Pubic lice, crabs. You laugh it off until the itching becomes agony. Tiny insects crawl through hair, feeding on blood, laying eggs that cling to the skin. 
you scratch until the skin breaks. The lice themselves don't kill. But the scratching opens wounds, bacteria seep in, skin infections spread, and sometimes those infections enter the blood. Sepsis takes hold, burning fever, confusion, and collapse. What began as humiliation, a nuisance, ends with your body failing from something you never imagined could kill. Lymphogranuloma venereum, LGV, a wound too small to notice until it eats from the inside out. Days later, lymph nodes swell, hard lumps in the groin that ache with every step. They grow, filling with pus, until they burst, draining through the skin. The infection spreads deeper. <coughs> Tissue scars, fistulas, unnatural tunnels open between organs. Pain becomes a constant companion. Then abscesses rupture inside. Sepsis takes hold, flooding the body with fever, shaking, and shock. What began as a mark too small to see ends as years of pain and disfigurement followed by the sudden collapse of a body overrun. Granuloma inguinale, donovanosis, a single red mark, then another, then rot. What starts as a harmless bump becomes a bleeding ulcer. Soon, the genitals are covered in raw wounds, spreading outward, relentless. The lesions eat through flesh, leaving scars that twist and deform. Urination becomes unbearable. Control over bowels slips away, and with every open sore, infection finds its way in. Sepsis follows, fever, confusion, organ failure. Granuloma inguinale doesn't kill quickly. It disfigures first, stealing dignity, before finally stealing life. Molluscum contagiosum, a gentle warning from the body. Something worse is coming. Small pink bumps dot the skin, spreading slowly, lingering for months or years. In the healthy, they fade. But in the weak, they multiply endlessly, covering the body. They itch. They irritate. But the real danger isn't the virus. It's what it means. Molluscum itself won't kill. But it signals that the immune system is already failing. And when the immune system is gone, everything else moves in. Pneumonia, sepsis, cancer. The bumps are only the warning sign that death has already found a way inside. Scabies. They burrow beneath your skin, unseen but relentless. Mites carve tunnels through flesh. Ow. Laying eggs, hatching, spreading. At night, the itching becomes torture. Sleep vanishes. Sanity slips. The scratching tears the skin open. Bacteria flood in. Infections grow. Cellulitis spreads, and in the worst cases, sepsis follows. Fever, shaking, delirium, the body shutting down. The mites themselves don't kill, but they drive you to open the door for something worse. What began as an itch becomes a spiral into death. Pelvic inflammatory disease, PID. Pain that starts as a whisper ends as a scream inside the body. Bacteria creep upward from untreated infections, attacking the uterus, the fallopian tubes, the ovaries. They scar and twist, blocking pregnancies from ever reaching the womb. Sometimes, an egg implants in a fallopian tube, stretching it until it bursts. Blood fills the abdomen. The pain is sharp, blinding. Within minutes, shock sets in. For others, abscesses rupture flooding the blood with infection. Fever soars. Confusion takes over. Organs begin to fail. What began as a hidden infection ends in sudden collapse. PID is the quiet intruder that waits until it can strike with devastating force. 